What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. After we have completed intro to printer exploitation, we're going to take a new track. And my choice landed on this track because it contains different challenges where you're going to learn something different in every challenge. So as you can see, these are these challenges are about binary exploitation, buffer overflows, binary abuse, so on and so forth. They have also forensics and cryptography and other aspects. So let's first start with the first challenge. Questionnaire. Question is ranked as very easy. So let's see if this is real. So we start the instance and there are some files that you need to download. Namely the files are the source code that you have to analyze and the binary that you're going also to take a look at. So it's time to learn some things about binaries and basic C. Connect to a remote server and answer some questions to get the flag. Let's see. So here I have the zip file. After you extract the contents, you will have test, the binary, and the source code. On the other hand, we're going to connect to the new remote server to start answering the questions. So NC. Okay, so the first question is, is this a 32-bit or 64-bit ELF file? So first we have to analyze or find out the architecture of the binary. Now, the questions here uh, are kind of a guided assessment that, uh, or guided assessment for the steps that you have to take when you are analyzing a binary, specifically for the purpose of reverse engineering the binary, debugging the binary, or you could be taking these steps when you analyze malware as well. So we use the file tool and then test. Using the file command, we will be able to get very basic information about the binary. Namely, we have the architecture. We have the, um, as you can see, it's dynamically linked. The interpreter used to compile the binary. And also we have whether the binary is stripped or not. So the answer to this question is 64-bit binary. What's the linking of the binary? Static or dynamic? It was written here. It is dynamic. Is the binary stripped or not? It is not. Which protections are enabled? Canary, NX, Pi, Fortify. So to check the protections, we have two options. You can either use check, sec, dash dash file, equal the file name, or we can apply this command within GDB debugger. So basically, let's assume that we don't have GDB debugger. You want to find the protections enabled on the file. Don't use this tool, and here you can see that the protections listed. So the only protection enabled here is the NX. So no pi, uh, no canary found, no pi, no canary, and no R path, no run path. Only NX enabled. So we answer with NX. So these protections are kind of used to prevent buffer overflow attacks. So if you take a look here at the notes. I have explained these in details. So first, to analyze a binary or to for buffer overflows, we take a couple of steps. So we check the file with checksec. And as you can see, if the output shows NX is disabled, then this means no protections, right? And there was there, there is another protection for binaries called ACLR. So you can check if the ACLR is enabled on the binary or not by issuing this command. Zero means disabled, one means enabled, and two means also enabled. NX is a kind of protection where executing code in the stack is prohibited. So for the case of this binary, we're not going to be able to execute a shell or code in the stack because NX is enabled. What's the name of the custom function that gets that the gets called inside main? So let's take a look at the code. And inside the main function here, we can see there is a one function named vulnerable or vern being called. So that's the answer. 
what is the size of the buffer so here it takes you through the source code now when you want to find a bug in a code you have to go through the source code and understand the different variables parameters and functions so what that's the aim for these questions so the question here is what's the size of the buffer let's start with main so there is a function called vulnerable it gets called so we go to the function we define a buffer with 20 bytes and as you can see it contains 0 so the size of the buffer is 20 ox20 which custom function is never called as you can see now to answer this question we have to take a look at the main function in the C code inside the main function we can see all of the calls made to every function defined before the main function so we see in the main function here we see only one function getting called which is the vulnerable however above vulnerable there is another function named gg and gg kind of retrieves the system flag or executes a command named cat to retrieve the system flag apparently this function never gets called so it's gg what's the name of the standard function that could trigger a buffer overflow let's see here so in c language in c language there are multiple ways to print a statement or to print an output or a string so some methods are not recommended are absolute and never recommended to be used because they lead to vulnerabilities and they have bugs so one of the functions is fprintf it's not recommended to use this function so the answer is fprintf leads to buffer overflow what's the name of the standard function that could trigger oh, wrong fprintf what did I answer with? Oh, sorry. It's F gets. So it's the F gets, not the uh, F print. So I kind of uh, want to reverse everything I said. So all of I said, all I said about the methods to handle the user input applies here. So F gets is a vulnerable method to handle user input as you can see we have user input here so if the user um, just enters um, an input that exceeds in size the size of the buffer it will lead to buffer overflow after how many bytes a segmentation fault occurs now segmentation fault is an error that occurs when the binary or the program cannot handle the user input if a segmentation fault occurs and is displayed in the output back to the user it means the program is vulnerable to buffer overflow that's how you find out if the binary is uh, vulnerable to buffer overflow if you receive segmentation fault while uh, supplying different sorts of inputs your program have or has a buffer overflow so after how many bytes a segmentation fault occurs so why we ask how after how many bytes a segmentation fault occurs because we want to find out the after find, find out the return address and we want to find out after how many bytes we can insert the shell code so let's see that we use gdb debugger dash q and we define the binary name so we run gdb now so the first thing to do is to generate a pattern so as you can see insert 30 then 39 then 40 A's in the program and search for the output now you can generate A's you can generate B's it doesn't matter but what, what matters is to generate an out uh, a string or an input that equals in size to 30 39 then 40 so pattern create 30 so we have 30 characters let's take them and supply them to the program so how to do that we have to run the program so in gdb debugger we can run the program using r and the program now is running as you can see there is um, a prompt that wants your input so we enter the input and we see the program's reaction 
So the program just exited. Never mind these. The program just exited. No segmentation fault happened. It means that the input was handled by the program. Now let's try with 39. So with 39 we got this. Or Apparently the program wants more. So I enter 39 characters and it needs more. So if I enter again 39, again it needs more. So we're not gonna supply more now. It's just enough to say that 39 doesn't lead to segmentation fault. All right, let's exit. Now let's supply with 40. Or 40 and now we get segmentation fault now we get the segmentation fault so let's see here let's go up let's see go to the line where yeah here it is so the question is after how many bytes a segmentation fault occurs to find out after how many bytes we have first to find the instruction pointer address this is the address of the instruction pointer as you can this is rip is the instruction pointer in intel x64 and other important registers to take a look at when a segmentation fault happens is the sac pointer and also we have the base pointer as you can see in the source index we get to see the input that we supplied and in the base pointer, we can see the last couple strings starting from here. So this is where it started to malfunction. So basically, and this is the instruction pointer and this is the stack pointer. So the next step is to find, let's take a look here. So when X is enabled, and let's go down, see when X, yeah, when X is enabled, we take these steps so we want to find out now the as you can take a look of the asset you found and then we need to find out the uh, EIP so we want to find out the address of the instruction pointer apparently we have it here so what we're going to do we're going to search for the offset pattern search this will give us after how many bytes now we put in the address of the instruction pointer. The instruction pointer points at the next instruction in the memory that will be executed by the program. Okay, scrolling up, we search for pattern buffer found at. It found, it was found at 40. So after 40 bytes, or at 40 bytes, when you supply exactly 40 bytes or more, the program will start to malfunction and you get the segmentation fault. So it is 40. So what's the meaning of that? After 40 bytes, the program malfunction. Okay, now the next thing, what you have to do, you have to know that every shell or every um, shell code you have to generate, you have to, the shell code has to be inserted after the uh, after 40 bytes that's how you're going to execute the shell code into return address of the function now this function doesn't have a return as you can see here but anyway uh, today's video is not to fully exploit the binary just to show you the first steps that you have to take and then the steps that come after that will be about generating the shell code so basically now the next question is what is the address of the gg function now let's get the address of the gg function by executing this assembly this will give us the address of the function unknown return type okay without parenthesis so this is the disassembling of the function gg and it's the function that is here displayed here So it starts here. 
So what's the address of this function? It is this address without the zeros. And the answer is correct and this is your flag. So that was it for this challenge guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you later.